Hi. A little bit ago I created a Jace 2.0 character that is based upon the Jace character that comes with Anime Studio. And some people asked um, to give some more details on how I did this. And specifically one of the things that people were interested in is how smart bones can control switch layers. So I'm going to go over that here. Now before I go into how to create smart bone dials that will control switch layers, let me show you one reason where I uh, find it really powerful. In one of my characters I have the hands as switch layers and so I can use the smart bone dial to select whichever hand I'm interested in as I'm animating. Now that's really nice but let me show you another tip here. Um, as I move the smart bone dial, there are so many hand positions in this particular character that sometimes is just even too many and it's hard to find the exact one. So a trick that I do is I have the transform uh, bone tool selected and I click in the angle text area and I have a mouse wheel and as I roll that mouse wheel I can easily see each hand and I can go quickly or slowly however I want. And that's probably the best example. I use them also for um, mouth positions. I don't just use the standard switch layers. I have many different mouth positions for uh, expressing different kinds of emotion. And so you can do that for any number of different uh, things that you would use switch layers for. And if you're new to Anime Studio, uh, as we deal with the smart bones, there are some um, gotchas and some things to, to watch out for. So in this tutorial, I'll, I'll talk about those so that you can be successful in setting up your smart bones to control switch layers. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we'll talk about is just using a smart bone to switch between different views of Jace. So right here, if you bring up Jace, you see that uh, he has actually one, two, three, four different views of him. So we're just going to bring all those into Anime Studio. So here Jace is loaded into An Anime Studio. And what we're going to do is I'll go to the top uh, first view and then press the shift and select all of them and uh, choose group with selection. And now I'll name that Jace. How about Jace 2.0? Now, if you have earlier versions of Anime Studio, or perhaps even debut, debut, as long as you've got the smart bones, you should be able to do these things. Uh, there may be some things that I have in Anime Studio Pro 11 that you don't have, such as this group with selection. But you can still just put them, the bone layers, underneath the, the group. So now what I'm going to do is convert that to a switch layer. And we see, Jace, the front view is selected. Now this thing that I'm showing is a, a nice way to take pre-existing Anime Studio content and combine the multiple views into a single uh, character. But of course you can use that same technique with your own characters that you create. However, one thing that you might find if you're using predefined characters is that their sizes may not be the same between the different views. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that layer 1, the layer that gets created when you create a new project and I'm just going to rename it to reference. Okay so now what I've done on this layer is I've created uh, vector lines to be at the top of the head, the bottom of his chin, through the middle of his body, and the bottom of his feet. Now if we go to the 45 view you see it's a, not quite the same size and the side you can see his feet are hanging off and back is close. So let's start with the 45 degree view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first set the origin of that layer. And so I'm going to choose that origin tool and put it right at the middle of his body because he seems well centered and at the bottom of his feet. What that allows me to do now as I take the layer and I resize the layer, his feet will kind of stay in position and allow me to size him appropriately. 
So I think that's pretty good for right now. Notice that his head is not exactly the same size as the front. Um, and those things can change because the artist may have uh, considered the perspective of the character or for whatever reason. You can adjust it later um, in the video. I'll talk about separating the head from the body, but we're just kind of combining them right now. And so all I'm going to do is do that same process for the other views. So for example, for the side view, again, I'm going to put that center of the origin. I think he's fairly well centered, but I'm going to put it at the bottom of his feet. And now I can translate and resize. Now that I've got everything sized and centered properly, I can turn off that reference layer if I want to. And I'm going to actually create a smart bone now to control these layers. But actually I realized I only have one 45 and one side view. So let me first create uh, both matching left and right views. Now if you have Anime Studio Pro 11, um, you can use the reference layer. Um, but if you don't, you can just copy the layer. So I'm going to go to uh, Jace 45 and I'm going to click on the ellipsis and rename that Jace 45 left say OK. And now I'm going to create a reference layer of that. And I'm going to name that Jace 45 right. And all that I'm going to do now is go up here and flip the layer horizontally. This is another case where setting that origin, as long as I set the origin right through the middle of his body, then he will flip in a nice way. Okay, so I've created a reference layer for the side and the 45 degree angles, and I've uh, renamed them appropriately. And you can put them in whatever order that you want. I have them as he's uh, turning from left to right. Um, but now what I'm going to do is right click on that switch layer and set Jay's front to the default view. Since we're on frame zero, uh, this is the way Jace will appear uh, initially. Okay, now for the smart bump you can actually put bones on switch layers. And since in this demonstration I'm just going to use the bone only for switching the layers, that's what I'm going to do. Um, but you can have more complex arrangements. So all I'm going to do is click on the bone and just add a bone next to his body and press shift because I want it to go straight up and label that body turn. So we're going to turn this into a smart bone, and I select Bone, Make Smart Bone Dial. In earlier versions of Anime Studio, you didn't have Make Smart Bone Dial, uh, but you can uh, do just like any smart bone. This is just convenience. Um, I like here, in this particular case, uh, negative 90 to 90. You could set it to 45 if you want. And for duration of frames, I like to choose 96 because that's even. Um, there's a mark there because I use the 24 uh, frames uh, per second. Now this one separate actions for positive and negative angles, let me show you a tip about that. So at first I'm going to uncheck that and select OK. So as I scrub across the timeline we see that the smart bone moves from left to right so that's all great and we only have one action. That's an important thing to see. There's only one action called body turn. Now since we are wanting Jace to be uh, facing front in his default view, I'm going to go to the middle so that the bone is straight up and down. And I'm going to, on the Jace 2.0, I'm going to select front. That's creating a keyframe here, um, a switch right here at 48. Now a little bit to the left, I'm going to select 36. I'm just going to set it to Jace 45 left and then at 24. Jace uh, side left. And here you go, wasn't paying attention very well, but I'll show you how easy it is to switch it properly. I probably want him to be right there. And so go back to 36 and make him 45 right so that the arrow is kind of showing in the direction he's going to go. And you can pick whatever um, locations that you want. It doesn't have to be 60 or 36 or anything. I'm just spacing them out so it's easy to move the dial and uh, see him change. So I'm going to be at 72 and select it for left side there. And then on one of these sides I'll make him go back. Maybe I'll do it in both. Okay, so at 84 I'll make
make Jake go back, and then back at 12, I'll make Jace go back. And that's all there is to it, so you just close the main line, or rather close the action and go to the main line. Now I'm going to hide the timeline view, so I'm going to just turn my phone and we can see his body moving. And that's how you get it so that you've got a single bone to control the body. And of course, if you want to manipulate the bones for that particular uh, pose, you can just change them. You, you select the bone layer of uh, th that has all the body bones on them, and you can manipulate Jace. However, as I said, I was going to show you a tip. Uh, there is a catch with this. To show you that, I'm going to bring up the timeline, and I'm going to move to one of the frames, and what I'm going to do is um, make his body turn, let's say, to the side. Now, if I go later to another place, and I select, say, well, you can see it's front, or 45, or anything. Um, the switch layer doesn't seem to be working anymore. Um, so the only way that you can have his body turn is by using the smart bone. And so that may not be really what you want to do. And in fact, if I go back to that bone and I reset the angle, okay, he's facing front. So if I want to change it to 45, see, the control just doesn't seem to work. In other words, you can only do the smart bone um, and not the switch layer as well. Well, that issue can be resolved by using the two actions per smart bone, and I'll show you that in just a second. But before I do that, let me show you one other thing. Since I'm using a smart bone to control the switch layers, the smart bone is moving from one position to another. So what we actually are keyframing is the angle of the bone. And so as the bone moves, we see it actually goes through the intermediate switch layers. And that may not be something that you're wanting. You may want it to go directly to that other switch layer. Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. Select those uh, keyframes and set them to step. Now, he will stay in a position of a particular uh, switch layer until you hit that next keyframe. And in fact, you should set that to step as the default for any movements of this smartphone. And that way, it will automatically set it up. So that's the way, if you're using a smartphone to um, control switch layers, you should set the step as the default whenever you're manipulating that particular bone. Okay, if you haven't done a lot of animating, then I'll show you how simple it is to create the two-bone version. I'm going to delete all of the keyframes that I've created. I'm also going to go to the action and delete that action. I'm going to leave the bone, though, and I'm just going to go back to bone and say, make it a smart bone dial again, and I'm going to uh, leave all the values the same, except for I'm going to select separate action for positive and negative angles. So what you'll notice as I scrub across, I'll see the bone turning, and I have a, a body turn, and I also have body turn space two. That's the way the Anime Studio recognizes that two uh, actions are associated with a particular bone, and you'll notice that uh, the bone turns in the other direction. So you need to make sure that uh, when you look at the different actions, that the bone is going in the different directions. You want one action, the bone goes to one direction, and in the other action, the bone goes in the other direction. Now, that will happen automatically, except for if you're parenting bones, uh, which I'll show you a little bit later, um, you can get have some problems. So now all I do is exactly what I did before, except for I'm only going to put half of them on one layer. In. So clearly I didn't need 96 uh, frames here, uh, but that's what I've got right now, so I'll just leave it that way. So I've got him facing left, and around 24, he'll switch to the 45, and then side, and back. And same thing for the other action, but just in the opposite direction. Okay, now let's look what happens in this situation. Okay, so I'm going to uh, move the body, bone, and let's set him on the side view. Now let's compare the switch layer. If I right-click on there, it says Jace is facing front. Huh. Well, he's facing sideways. Well, 
what's happening is the bone is controlling it and so it's overriding what the switch layer itself is saying. So again, no matter what I select, it's going to um, use what the bone is telling it to do. But let me go to that bone. I'm going to use the, this transform tool here and select the angle and reset it. So when the bone is actually straight up in its original position, then the switch layer is taking control. So we can see that because I can go in here and switch, oops, switch to a different view and now the switch layers um, are taking precedence. So if you use the two actions per bone, then you can use the switch layer layers as long as the bone is in its original position. So there you go. Now you can uh, select any of the views just by moving your smartphone. And notice that another really good thing about this is that the keyframe is on that top layer. So I can easily see when Jace is changing. Okay, so let's talk about the bone parenting issue. Um, suppose you've got another bone, say for example in the body, and so as I move the body around I want this uh, body turn bone to move with the body so that all the controls stay with that character. So I may want this body bone uh, parented or uh, as a child of this body, this bone in the middle of his body. Now just to let you know, I've set the bone constraints to zero zero for that uh, this bone just to keep it from moving to show you what happens. So now I'm going to go to the reparent and I'm going to select the body turn, alt, and select that bone and now click on the bone in the middle of his body so we can see that the body turn bone is parented to uh, this one in the middle of his body. Okay, so what happens when we manipulate that bone? Huh, it's not working the way I thought it would work. What's going on? Okay, so I brought up the timeline and look at the body turn action and as I scrub across this seems like it works fine. What's the problem? Well the first thing that you should notice is that the angle, the bone hits the uh, end of its constraint before it ever gets to frame 96, before it should, so it's way ahead of its time. Then if I look at body turn 2, as I move it, look, the bone is going in the same direction. Now I'm not sure what parenting, uh, what's happening when you parent the bones, why it causes this that to happen, uh, but this happens every time you parent the bones. So um, even if you parent before you create the, um, the action. So you, whenever you parent the bone, you want to make sure that you've uh, properly set up these angles. So I will have body turn two go in one direction. The way I do it is select this tool, the transform bone tool, and I just move it away and move it back. Now when you'll first start to drag it, it won't seem to move, um, but then it'll move, so it kind of is resetting things. So I'm going to go back to the body turn, and again I need to make sure that I'm on frame 96, and I'm going to make sure that the bone faces in the other direction. Okay, so now as I scrub through, I should see his body turn as it hits these different keyframes. Okay, so now let's go back to the main line and um, try to manipulate and now we see that he's working properly the way we expect. So that's just something to be aware of if you ever want to parent your bones. And so now I can move, use that body to move him and then use the smart bone to make him turn.